Are you ready to carry on the fight against Sephiroth and save the world? Team up with Cloud, Barret, Tifa, and Aerith once again in this hotly anticipated release from the masters of the JRPG, Square Enix. But do you need a primer before taking on Shinra? Or let's be real, getting super into Queen's Blood? We've got you covered. Here's everything you need to know about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a direct follow-up to 2020's Final Fantasy VII Remake, and as such, sees you rejoining Cloud's team in the immediate aftermath of the events of the previous game. Spoilers for Remake, but really, if you haven't played that one yet, then what are you even doing here? Remake ended with Cloud sort of winning his fight against Batty in every sense of the word, Sephiroth then breaking free of the whispers to head out into the world. We then saw something very curious, a change in the past, featuring none other than Cloud's long-lost war buddy and an ex of Aerith, Zack Fair. Cloud and Zack make their way to Midgar together following an intense fight against a pack of goons from evil mega corporation Shinra, which came as a surprise to us since Zack is super killed at this point in the original Final Fantasy VII. We don't yet know where Zack goes afterwards, but he does gift Cloud his totally sick buster sword, which is way less of a bummer than how Cloud gets his hands on it originally. In Rebirth, Cloud, along with Tifa and Barret, have become mercenaries for Avalanche, an eco-terrorist group devoted to stopping Shinra's exploitation of the planet. The three mercs, along with their pals Aerith, Red 13, and Yuffie, must work together to take on both Shinra and Sephiroth, with the fate of the planet hanging dangerously in the balance. If you're familiar with the original Final Fantasy VII, you can expect Rebirth to cover the story beginning with leaving Midgar up to the events at the Forbidden Capital. Though, given the many story deviations we saw in Remake, there's no guarantee that everything will unfold exactly the way it did back in 1997. In fact, considering the Zack of it all, it's a pretty safe bet that we can expect some major changes. And as for what's going to happen to everyone's first girlfriend, Aerith, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Though Remake took place Pretty much exclusively in Midgar, Rebirth will see the Cloud Crowd traipsing all across the planet to a variety of exciting new locales. You can expect to hit up Calm, Junon, Costa del Sol, Cosmo Canyon, the Forbidden City, and most excitingly, the Gold Saucer, a mega amusement park in the heart of the Coral Desert, where we can keep our fingers and paws crossed in hopes of running once again into Kitty Extraordinaire K Sith. We get to bop around an amusement park and make friends with a talking cat? The folks at Square clearly understand their target audience. Of course, we don't know what order we can expect to visit these spots or how they'll differ from their original 1997 incarnations. But given everything we've seen in the series so far, we can expect the view will be breathtaking. Not, uh, not literally, we hope. Final Fantasy VII Remake was notable for the amount of changes made from the original game. Given the foundation it's building off of, we can expect that Rebirth will deviate significantly from the original game. The only question is how, and also, should we be scared? If you're just getting into the series now though, and this is an interesting place to start, but Square themselves say you're okay to jump in at this point, there are a few things to keep in mind about the gameplay. Though combat in the original Final Fantasy games was, for better or for worse, totally turn-based, the remake trilogy utilizes a real-time combat system, also for better or for worse. Players will be able to switch between party members on the fly taking advantage of each character's unique skills to more effectively defeat a variety of enemies. In the original game, players could use Materia to upgrade their team and better suit their personal playstyles. And the remake trilogy is no different, with magic, command, support, complete, and summoning material at their disposal to shape their party how they see fit. Speaking of shaping the party, new synergy attacks will see team members pairing up to deliver mega blows to enemies. Additionally, 
Persona heads can get excited about a new affinity building system with Cloud's allies. And everyone can get excited about chocobos now being able to find buried treasure like a truffle pig that's also 9 feet tall and super fast. Though gameplay DLC hasn't been announced for Rebirth, Square did release Remake Intergrade the year after Remake's release, which was designed to enhance the gameplay experience with improved visuals and shorter load times. Additionally, they released Intermission, which introduced us to Yuffie's story. All of which is to say, gameplay DLC isn't out of the realm of possibility. Square has, however, announced plenty of pre-order bonus DLC for Rebirth. All pre-orders will come with the Midgar Bangle Mark II Armor Bracelet, and players who already have Final Fantasy VII Remake save files can expect some fun bonus content as well. Remake save files from PS4 or PS5 unlock Summon Materia Leviathan, while the Intermission DLC save file unlocks Summon Material Rama. It's really the game that keeps on giving. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sees the return of several notable legacy members of Square Enix Business Division 1, many of whom were on the original game's development team. The director of the original game, Yoshinori Kidase, will continue leading the team in a production role, and the famed character designer Tetsuya Nomura is remaining as creative director for the trilogy, with Naoki Hamaguchi taking the role of lead director. Kazushige Nojima, the writer of the original game, will work as the writer on Rebirth as well. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will be released initially as a PlayStation 5 exclusive, with a PC version planned for release later this year. The game will release on PlayStation 5 on February 29th, 2024, and the Standard Edition will set players back a cool 70 bucks. If you want to get a little extra though, and who doesn't, you can upgrade to the Deluxe Edition for $100, which includes the base game, a hardcover art book, mini soundtrack, and steelbook case. Final Fantasy's biggest fans, their finalist fantasies, if you will, may be tempted to shell out $350 for the collector's edition. This mega fan's dream is available to pre-order only on the Square Enix store and comes with a 19-inch Sephiroth statue, as well as all of the Deluxe Edition content. You also get a few extra in-game bonuses, including two summoning materia, the Moogle Trio and the Magic Pot, Orchid Bracelet Armor, and the Reclaimant Choker Accessory. At GameSpot, this week is all about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so series fans will have plenty of content to check out as they wait for the game's release. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to Midgar. I've got a card-based minigame to get way too invested in. 